Yeah. I'm, yes. That. Yes. I'm. For some reason, the uh, clicker's not working. Let me know when. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to VMware Explore 2024 to the community uh, sessions. My name's Tony Foster. And thank you for coming to Empowering Virtual uh, Environments, the VGPU Resource Scheduling Plugin. Um, well, sort of. I sort of made a mistake. Got a little too far ahead of me on my uh, skis. And we're going to talk about all this here uh, as we go through the session. Um, and so, yeah. I was originally going to talk to you about uh, doing this as an API, because still really cool. You can still do a lot of cool stuff with a uh, API. Well, I ran into a problem this morning. So we'll try that again. Yeah, we're just going to talk about uh, VGPU scheduling. Um, and reason for that is had a little bit of a problem uh, with a lot of things. I evidently upset the IT gods. Um, I am Tony Foster. I am the Wonder Nerd. So sometimes you will sit there and go, oh my gosh, that is absolutely amazing. That is wonderful. I can't believe that nerd did it. And sometimes you will go, I can't believe that nerd did it. Why did he do that? Anyway, here's my uh, little bio. I've been virtualized since the 2.0 days. Um, you can find me on uh, X, Wonder underscore Nerd. You can find me on LinkedIn uh, as Wonder Nerd. Um, if you hadn't guessed, Wonder Nerd sort of a thing, just in case the cape didn't give it away. So let's talk about what went wrong. Um, original plan was we were going to talk about plugins um, and how this thing just slides right in and you get to control your... Uh, virtualization uh, of VGPU resources. Well, I lost my plugin doc because there's a doc that I found that actually makes plugins a whole lot simpler than what you find in the uh, vSphere documentation. You just sit there, you follow along, and you can skip a bunch of the security stuff. Completely unsecure plugin, but you can skip it and you can get uh, good results with it. I managed to lose my bookmark. It's not in my history. It has disappeared from my system. So backup plan, API. Awesome. We can do the API. Flask broke this morning on me. I uh, had a uh, import that I was setting up. That way I wasn't showing everybody all of my uh, login credentials into my uh, home lab vCenter because um, no one wants to share all their credentials with uh, all of their friends at Explore. There's no telling what might happen. So I was like, shoot, what's going on here? What's going on here? I uh, rebooted my box that the plugin slash API was running on. Um, still didn't fix Flask. Okay, easy enough. Let's try a couple of things. Still could not get it to work. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna record a demo and show everyone how this works uh, just purely out of Python. Tried to uh, go run the code that was working flawlessly um, last night. It was even working flawlessly this morning before Flask broke. I rebooted my system to try and get the uh, Flask service to uh, work correctly because it wasn't coming back online after I made one simple import change uh, in my Flask uh, app. Now my code doesn't run correctly either. So this is probably going to be one of those sessions where you're like, wonder why he did that session. Darn nerd. So we're going to actually talk about how this thing functions and um, why people want to load balance 
and how you can use it in your environment, along with a timeline on when you're actually gonna get code and everything. So all of this is going to be available on my GitHub site. So github.com slash wondernerd, it'll all be there. Um, working code will probably be up tomorrow. As soon as I can find out what changed uh, after that reboot. Um, so anyway, there are lots of different ways to solve uh, resource scheduling of GPUs. Um, Johan van Armsfort, a friend of mine, uh, um, has a very nice section in his VDI Design Guide Part 2 book that walks through his way of um, doing resource scheduling with vGPUs. So, you can go out there every so often, ITQ will offer it for free, so you can download a free ebook of it. Um, awesome material, you will find my name in there. Um, Johan grabbed me to do a section in that, so you can uh, go out there, look at that, uh, and there's some great material on this and why you'd consider it in your environment. He's uh, actually done it for uh, the Netherlands Cancer Institute, and there is some great content in there. Now, the way I approach it is a little bit different from how Johan approaches it. And if you think about your resource usage, especially with VDI, you'll see that uh, typically with VDI, you have a peak um, when users come in and log in. All of a sudden, all of those uh, VDI systems that have GPUs assigned to them start getting turned on and consumed. And that lasts throughout uh, daylight hours, and then about five or six o'clock at night when people are going home, it starts tapering off. So we have a nice uh, lump in there with a lot of idle times for our GPUs. Now, if we track our uh, idle GPUs and stuff, it's the exact inverse of what we have running inside of our normal environment, or exact inverse of what we have for our utilization. Have lots of uh, idle hosts at the beginning, lots of idle hosts at the end, not a whole lot of idle hosts in the middle. Wouldn't it be great if we can capture those GPU resources and use them for our AI training or MLDL or anything else that requires a GPU? And that's the whole idea behind this plugin that I've been working on. Um, in fact, if you're interested, you can go out uh, today and download my PowerShell scripts that do the exact same thing. So those are on my GitHub website. You can see those uh, on GitHub. There's been a lot of changes uh, with the Python code that I did and this API because now you can actually go in and uh, take advantage of some of the new features that have been built into uh, vSphere 8.0 um, update two. So anyway, we're going to take advantage of these underutilized resource periods. That's what the plugin does. It sits there and monitors our usage of one type of machine. As that machine rises and falls, it adjusts our running uh, machines otherwise. So if we have um, an AI system that is a secondary program, we can turn on the AI machines to use that GPU when our VDI resources are low. So an overview of how this works. It's actually a pretty uh, slick little simple um, logic loop. It sits there and goes in, basically queries the environment and says, how many uh, GPU resources are free? And then goes in and um, says, hey, you told me the minimum number of GPU resources you wanted free on this system is five slots for uh, your VDI to start up. And you have 10 slots free. So I'm going to fire up five systems that can consume those 10 slots or consume those five slots, leaving you five slots free. A VDI session or any other uh, um, VGPU workload comes along and needs to use uh, that, 
The loop sits there and detects that a uh, new workload is started up uh, on the primary side, and it goes through and suspends your uh, current AI workload, which releases that GPU um, for availability back into the environment, maintaining that balance of, I want five free, and I want my primary workload to consume GPUs as much as possible. So that is the overview of um, the logic I apply when doing uh, resource scheduling. So here's the actual uh, idea of it. This is uh, more the Venn diagram. So we have uh, resources as our VDI uh, stuff expands, our compute resources shrink till it gets to a balanced state. Once we can balance out our workload, it's going to sit there, it's going to stay in a happy state until it becomes unbalanced. Then it's going to start uh, shrinking stuff down and uh, making resources available. So really cool, and I just realized I walked through that entirely backwards. So it starts by uh, suspending as VDI kicks in reaches a balanced state, and then as VDI goes away, the uh, compute takes over and gets to get larger. Now, one of the things I get asked a lot with this is, what sort of workloads can you run with this? You keep talking about VDI. You mentioned all this uh, VDI stuff. VDI is definitely a primary use case. And the reason VDI is a primary use case is a, it is very cyclical. During the day, it goes up. At night, it goes down. So it makes it an ideal target to try and capture uh, back resources, capture back um, any funds that you have invested in those GPUs so you can maximize utilization of them. Um, the other part that makes VDI nice is there's an external control mechanism that is turning on and off those VMs for you. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do it with AI. There are plenty of scheduling tools and stuff for AI workloads that will let you um, schedule your AI and bring machines up and down. So you could have two variations of AI running in your environment um, and have those scheduled and this will work with it. Uh, eventually you will probably be able to have multiple different types of um, workloads running and let it schedule accordingly against all of those. And then anything that uses a vGPU. If it's got a vGPU, we can work with it. So it's really uh, powerful in that regard. That said, what the API was going to look like uh, until it decided not to work for me today um, was it was going to be real simple. And there would be a lot more in here, but I decided just to go with the main one, which was uh, balancing. So literally, it would be a one-line uh, curl command uh, with a JSON string, similar to what you see down there in the bottom. And it would sit there, scan your environment, figure out what GPUs all of those uh, virtual machines you have uh, defined there. So. The way the JSON works is it wants to know what cluster you're running this against because it is a uh, cluster-wide uh, system, so it'll work across a cluster. Um, what the primary base name is, so whatever name you assign in VDI or AI workloads or anything. So in this case, holding VM, what the base name of the secondary VM is, which is compute in this case, your formatting for the end of the string. Is it all zeros across there? Is it the letter T? Whatever the uh, formatting is for both primary and secondary. The uh, starting secondary VM number. So does it start at zero? Does it start at one? Do you start at 23? Um, you can put all of that in there. Um, how many uh, uh, secondary VMs do you have? And how much spare capacity do you want? 
I have a small home lab. Um, I run two P4s and an L4. Uh, so that is the size of my home lab. So that's why my spare capacity is so low. Um, the plug-in, and again, code will be available um, hopefully tomorrow when I find out where the bug is. Um, you can sit there and each workload type can run different GPU formats. The code actually goes out and looks at the GPU formats for these uh, um, items listed in the JSON and determines what they are and how they balance against each other. So it'll figure that out. It'll also allow you to take advantage of um, mixed GPU types, which is a new feature that was introduced uh, um, in 8.0 update two. So you can actually sit there and run different profiles on the same vGPU. Now, there are some limitations that go along with this plugin um, or the API or uh, anything else. Right now it is for lab use only. Like I said at the beginning, I didn't want to broadcast all my credentials. Um, there are security uh, things that I know exist uh, inside my code that I had not had time to take care of. So um, you don't want to go using this in production and blasting uh, an account that has uh, permissions to control virtual machines all over the place. So right now it's lab use only. There's no emergency break on this. So one of the things people ask for is the ability to stop a uh, um, balancing operation if they discover that something isn't what they expected. They misset the uh, minimum number or performance isn't uh, where they want it. So there's no emergency break in this right now. Um, it is not optimized, it's not multi-threaded. So um, the code is a little bit slow, but it was the best way to do it. And I hadn't gone through and set timers to find all the uh, slow stuff. Error correction and detection is hit or miss in the code. It's actually really good with the strings and the names and everything. So it hits those uh, without a problem. You can do some pretty wonky stuff and it'll correct it but it won't catch everything. And then there's also an object bug inside of uh, uh, vSphere that I need to report that I discovered yesterday or Saturday, one of the two. Um, and it's under the uh, post.config.graphics info. And basically the uh, GPU, which is what that's uh, reporting on, doesn't update uh, the running virtual machines on it as fast as the rest of the environment. So it'll sit there and go, oh, you only have one virtual machine running on this GPU, when in reality you may have two or three running on it. So it doesn't quite update as fast. I actually had to put a sleep timer in um, because the code was executing too quickly. So we're getting to the end here. We have a uh, timeline of when you can actually expect to see all this. Um, I want to have the uh, code samples up so that you can at least play with the Python code and everything um, tomorrow. Again, this is lab use only, but you'll be able to drop this in a uh, Python environment and power it up and run it against your uh, environment. First or second week of uh, September, um, depending on how my schedule goes when I get back, I should have the uh, basic API available for everybody to use. Again, lab use only. October or November, I should have a beta plugin out for everybody to uh, put into their environment and try out in their home labs or lab spaces and see all the different capabilities that you can actually execute there. March, I should have the security enhancements um, and a fully functional plugin with all the security stuff that I'm aware of fixed. Um, and then in the future, and this is a request I just got earlier today on my code session, you should actually see a, a container version. I had somebody request a container version. So that's the uh, timeline of when you can see this. It'll all show up on my uh, website, um, wondernerd.net. 
or on my uh, GitHub, github.com slash wondernerd. With that, um, thank you so much for attending. Please take your survey, and I want to open it up for questions. Um, my buddies back there in the sound booth actually hooked me up with some tokens. So if you've got questions, I've got tokens and an opportunity for you to get a shirt. So any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, right now it is strictly NVIDIA because um, NVIDIA is the only one that has a real virtual GPU. So I'll get you hooked up with one. Uh, cool. Any other questions? Yes, sir. So the question was, uh, what are the limitations of the GPUs? So as long as, it is, as long as it's a commercial grade GPU for the data center, it'll work just fine. Um, NVIDIA follows uh, very specific formatting rules. And so, um, like I said, I've been testing this on a P4 and a uh, uh, L4. They both work perfect. And I'll get you hooked up as well afterwards. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, if not, thank you all so much for coming and listening to why I make mistakes and learn from them.